It's time for y'all to be standing where y'all standing.
Bless the Lord all over the sanctuary. And to our disciples in the Cyber Sanctuary, welcome you to Covenant City Fellowship. We believe in giving God the praise. Our God is worthy even on Super Bowl Sunday. We serve a Super Bowl-sized God that is able to deliver us and keep us from falling. The song simply says, my hallelujah belongs to you. And if that's you, just sing, just sing along with us because God's hallelujah belongs to us. Amen. It belongs to him. It belongs to him. He inhabits the praise of his people. He dwells in the praise of his people. So we give God praise. We give God honor. We give God glory for everything that he has done for us. Hallelujah. 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 Give God praise. The enemy will not defeat us. Amen. He will not defeat us. So we're giving God praise for everything that he has done. Come on, tell somebody my hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody my hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody my hallelujah belongs to him. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Can y'all help me say that? My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, say it with us. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs can y'all say it one more time? My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, wave your hand and tell Jesus my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Now tell them this, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. 
the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Come on, say it with us. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Y'all sound good. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, all of the glory belong to you. You deserve it. Come on, tell me, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Tell them again, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. Come on and help me say
y'all, y'all sitting there looking at us. I, I didn't came, I didn't come to entertain. I came to praise God with you. Amen. So the songwriter said, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. Is there anybody else that can witness with me to say that God has been good? Come on, don't fool me now. But God has, in spite of me, God has been good. In spite of my voice trying to play out, God has been good. Good. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. The storm. Come on. Tell somebody the storm. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't know when to have some church. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you. 
Come on, tell him. Come on, tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Lord, I love you. I lift, I lift my hand in total adoration to you. You reign, you reign on the throne. For you are God. For you are God and God alone because of you.
singing victory. And then y'all lost your mind on the next song. <laughs> but as I look back over my life, I understand what the songs, the words, the words, not just regular words, the words of God, how they penetrate and impact your life. And no matter what you go through, you know that had it not been for Jesus, we wouldn't be here. Amen, amen. Brother Andre, I think this thing is on pause, and I sent you a little text. <laughs> so let's look at it. This is Super Bowl Sunday once again. Super Bowl Sunday. Well, you know what? Let me pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your songs of Zion. We thank you for your praise party this morning, Father. Father, we know you're in the building as you are every Sunday, Father. We just thank you, Father, that we have somewhere to come and worship and share. And, and thank you for your name, Father. Now, Father, I ask, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Without you, Lord, I ain't nothing but a filthy rag. I give you all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Pastor Mothershed, it's good to see you this morning. Amen. Amen. Super Bowl Sunday. I call it Super Sunday because every Sunday is Super Sunday. You don't have to wait to the Super Bowl to get your shout on. You can get your shout on every Sunday. Amen. Because God is in the building. Our scripture this morning is coming out of 1 John 5 and 4. It says this morning, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. The Amplified says, for everyone born of God is victorious. That's all y'all out there. If you're saved, he said you're victorious and you and it overcomes the world. Because God has overcome the world, because we are partake with God, so we're victorious that we have overcome. Amen. That he has conquered and overcome the world in our continuing persistent faith. That's why we overcome, because of our persistent faith. Right. Think about this for a second. We know it's Super Bowl Sunday once again. Uh -huh. We know the Kansas City Chief won last year. But we don't know who's winning this year. Maybe the shirt I got on. <laughs> Maybe. But we have something already that the 49ers are trying to get. We have victory. I say once again, we have victory. It says we have victory in Jesus Christ already. So it doesn't matter what the game is going to be. As long as you stay on the field and play the game, yeah. you have victory already. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know you already won? Yeah. We just have to show up and play. We don't have to wait till a Super Bowl Sunday. Uh -huh. Our shout should be every Sunday yeah. for that week that you toiled and that you dealt with things yeah. that you didn't know that were out of your control. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so you said you were just going to pray and wait on God. Well, when you get to the house, there's the victory. Because you made it to the house. Don't you know some folks don't make it to the house? But you got to the house. That's why he says that he was assemble yourself together with other believers so you can sharpen one another and strengthen one another. That's why you should come to church. Because you can't sharpen yourself by yourself. You need somebody to lift you up and tell you and, and confirm what God has already told you. We have the victory. Yeah. Let me calm down. Y'all still got me fired up. Yes, this victory we have means Jesus already won it. Uh -huh. And he's already experienced it. Yeah. Remember I said because you're partakers of Jesus, so you already have the victory. You don't know, you don't know when to shout because you should be shouting because you're connected to Jesus. One thing for sure. In Christ doesn't mean that we won't have problems. 
We're still connected to the source, but we're still going to have some problems. Because the book of James says, count it all joy when you go through various trials or problems. Knowing that, the, uh, knowing that the testing of your faith produces work is perseverance. Meaning you got to go through. But when you, don't you know God is so good that when you're going through, he don't allow you to go through by yourself. He's already right there. Don't you know he's gave you the open book test? I said he's gave you the open book test. And your answers are right there. All you got to do is copy them. Or the term to, that we use today is plagiarize them. And we still mess that up with the open book test. Because we try to lean on our own understanding and instead of leaning on God. I said that we, your life will not be problem free. But in everything you do, you ought to do it for him. Because not only circumstances will change, but everything you do, you ought to do for him. Amen. Let me see what, what that's saying when we meet. When we face times where there is nothing that you're able to understand, right. when it is out of your control, well, yeah. let me stop right there because we like to control our lives. Right. But when we signed over to Jesus, we're no longer control right. over our life no more. Right. We don't need, we're not even sure what we're going to wear tomorrow. But when you sign over to Jesus, because if you let him control, watch how your life will prosper. Watch how he will bless you if you, if you let your life lead over to him. We got to take, take self out of us. Because didn't he say you got to deny yourself? Deny yourself. You know, you have to, when you're denying yourself, you have to give up yourself. Not just one thing, your whole way of life. I don't know if I told you my sermon is, it was supposed to show up, but it's Victory in Jesus. That's my title. Victory in Jesus. I, when you're going through things, when, you, when you're dealing with things, when it's not going your way, guess what likes to try to slip in your life? Unbelief. That unbelief. No long, how long you've been saved. No matter how long you've been in the word of God unbelief tries to creep in there. The devil tries to make you have doubt. I was sitting there, me and Sister Simon was talking about some things, I forget what we were talking about, some things that Brother Nick had told us. And we came to the conclusion that we just don't have faith. Not that we don't believe who God is, but it was this situation, it boiled down to, do you really believe what I say I'm going to do? Because when you start doubting, you already know what God has showed you and told you and, and, and said what you're going to do, right? right? But when you don't do it, you start doubting. Right. Right. It, and, and when you doubt it, do you really trust God? That's what it came down to. I thought I was great. But then I, then I said that, uh, y'all break me down a little bit, I'm high.
So I said, are you willing to consider how much God has done for you? Uh, and the key to it is when you're going through, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Right. I'm still there. All that time was going to complain. God is sitting right there. Because the last time I checked, when you accepted him in your life, he took residence in you. You, you didn't have to go nowhere looking for the Holy Spirit. He, he's in you. But we don't allow him to exercise the driver's seat. You know, it's like when we were taking driver's training. You, sometimes you got to be the student driver and let God drive. We want to drive and put God in the back seat. But you got to reverse the position. He's got to drive you in the back seat. And sometimes when you're going through the driver's test, you just got to be quiet. You just got to shut up. He said, let me, let me transfer this scripture. He said, be still and know. I am God. No matter what you're going through, I, I, I got you. If I didn't want you to go through that test, I would have stopped it. I'm the one that allowed you to go through that test. Why you going through that? I said I'm with you. You just have to trust me. Yes, if you don't go through something, how you gonna know how strong you are? Yes, sir. And I don't know, we don't like tests, I don't like them either. But it makes you stronger. I appreciate, you appreciate it more when you're going through. When you come out, it makes you stronger. In order to, Pastor Simon used to say, in order to get to the next level, you gotta go through something. When he first told me that, I was like, well, keep me at the same level. I said, I don't want to go through all that. And like I said, man, I tell you, and I always say that them gray hairs for me, I used to question him so much. Why did it? Why? God said, because I chose you. That's why. To go through it. And so God will put people in your life to help you. To benefit you. If you got friends that ain't helping you, they ain't no good for you. Y'all, get rid of them. Because you want people that's going to help you and support you. You want somebody to tell you when you're going through what the word says to help you. Right. The iron sharp is iron. Right. Because when you're going through, you need I don't need your opinion. Yeah. If my opinion didn't work, that's why I'm going through. Right. So you give me the, what the word says, right? right. So when we when we looking at this victory in Jesus, when I was going through, I had one of these moments that I was going through, and there were two very important jobs I thought I was going to get. I thought didn't work in position, didn't get none of them. I called my pastor and I don't know what God gave me. Problem is, I leaned on. I didn't lean on God. I leaned right. on me. Some things have to happen in order for God to get His work done. And so when I was when I was going through, I wasn't even I wasn't even talking to God. I was working on me, working, trying to do everything I can. Didn't consult God for the position. Because I saw I got it. I'm the next guy up. Don't you know man will let you down? Bye. Don't you know? Pastor Simon used to tell me years ago, I got mad at him when he said, trust no man. I said, you don't trust me? <laughs> he said, the Bible says trust no man. Bye, sir. When you think about it, how many times have you not even trusted yourself? Bye. Or leaned on your own self. That's why he said, put your hope in God. When you put, here's the thing when you put your hope in God. You not, God's going to tell you what's right and what's correct and the truth. Right. The problem with folks today is the truth hurts. The Bible doesn't talk about feelings. It talks about what's true. The truth shall set you free. I don't care if, you, if some of you know it's going to hurt me, but if it's the truth, if it's the word of God, you got to tell me. Right. Let me get over it later. Right. Because you will bounce back. 
if you connect it to the power source. Right. So we have to understand, so victory, victory in Christ is something that is independent of whether we have problems. We have, because we have the victory regardless of what we have problems. Right. Because he already said we're going to have problems, right? Yep. So why are we tripping if we know we're going to have problems? He already says it. He says victory in Christ is possible despite the problems, the trials, and the hardship, and the headaches we go through. We still have victory. Right. After all that, we still got it. I know it didn't go our way. It didn't go my way. But it went the way God wanted it to. Right. right. So that, that was the correct way. Right? He doesn't make a mistake. He doesn't lie. So if you didn't get it, God didn't want you to get it. Right. That's just plain and simple. That's hard truth, ain't it? When we go to get things or want things and we don't get them, don't you know God always has something better for you? He always has it, but we have to wait. I love to see people get blessed. My turn is coming next. I don't know when next is, but I'm going to continue serving and doing the things God told me because I know my turn is coming. If ain't nobody getting nothing, I'm like, uh oh. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I always said that, and I say that in my ministry, that we have a great pastor. And I didn't say he was perfect, but he's great because he follows and believes what the word of God says. That's what we need, y'all. Some folks don't do that. He does. And so that's why no matter what, God keeps blessing the ministry because he's following what the word of God says. So understand this, that he came back or we came to overcome these things that belong to you. Understand this old way of life, the old creation. We got saved so that way is gone, right? We don't want to worry about that. We don't want to transfer back to the old way. We want to transfer back to the new. Because understand that you can't live without Jesus. Let me say that again. You can't live. You can't walk. You can't have fellowship. You can't have none of that without Jesus. Because once he took residence, you, you became new. Right. Everything you do should be new. And it should be a lifestyle change for you that you do. It says, because we, example, when we're saved, we know we're born again. Salvation is, is not progressive. You are either new or you're not. Wow. There, there's, there's no in-between in there. Wow. I always tell people, when you went down and got baptized, there's no in-between. Right. If you're not following what Christ did, you just took a bath. That's all you did. <laughs> you went down as a devil and you came back as a devil. There's got to be some newness. There's got to be some change. There's got to be some evidence. There's got to be some things that you show that folks don't. You don't even have to tell folks you're a Christian because the evidence of your works or who you follow should show who you belong to. I'm scared of folks that go, man, I'm a Christian. You ain't got to tell me that. You should know by the fruit yeah. that you bear. Yeah. Because you've been new, right? Uh, it's not a debate whether your body's new, because this body I got ain't going to become new. This is old. <laughs> but my soul is new. Yeah. Yeah. My eyes and everything, they're old. But the way I look now, I don't look through my side, I look through the lens of God now. Right, sir, right. I see his lens that he wants me to see. Because he's opened my eyes to stuff I couldn't see when I wasn't saved. Right. Now I see I see different. So this is why we got to be continually renewed daily. Daily. Because sin wants to take place at your door every morning. Right, sir. It, it, it wants to start right there. And if you ain't careful, you slip in. Right. Because he's trying to get in. And sometimes he don't even have to slip in. Sometimes we just open the door and let him in. I got to tell them what I'm going to say. No, that ain't what God told you. Because we all are capable of slipping at one time or another, right? Amen, amen. Think about this. This overcoming and this victory, we have to understand our minds sometimes get confused because we want to lean on our own understanding. Right. We cannot and will never 
understand the mind of God. Right. Never. What's he doing? But all we have to do is work for him, and the possibilities are endless. Endless. What it means is, when the world says no, God can say yes. Right. When they say you can't get this, God can say I can do this. Right. When they say no, it's not going to happen, God says I can happen. Right. He opens any closed door. When I say victory, when, when you guys was talking about singing the song victory, I had some people just run through my mind. My granddaughter, my grandson, Pastor Simon, I'm seeing all this stuff, everything that's running through my mind where God stepped in. Right. All these things said no, God stepped in and said yes. Yeah. Even when my grandson went to the doctor the other day, he said, well, he's, he's not where he should be, but I, I'm not too sure if he can hear I said, you ain't seeing what I'm seeing. You need to put on my glasses. All right. But you can give the report, but there's another doctor that gives yeah. another report. Yeah. And then, so my son's like, Dad, do you really think God healed him? I yelled, blank! And I said, what do you think that was? He said, well, the doctor, I don't care what the doctor said. I said, son, you better go to Dr. Jesus. That's who you got to report. That's who you got to follow, what Dr. Jesus said. Understand that it doesn't matter what nobody said. All that matters is what Jesus said. So that's what you got to get to. So we have to understand that, that ourselves and God, even though we're free, he set us free. We're not free to do anything we want. See, I think we get that a little bit confused. We think that God has set us free, that we're able to do anything. No, we're able to do, we have the freedom, the liberty in Jesus. That's what we're able to do as long as we're following the things that he commands us to do. I think Christians forget there's a set of rules that we have to follow. You just can't do anything. There's rules that you have to follow because you represent Jesus. My daddy used to say, don't go out there and mess up my name. You Mike Neal, don't you go out there and mess up my name. I'm Otis Neal. Keep that last name like it should be. That's what Jesus is telling us today. Don't you go out there and mess up my name. You belong to me. You're an ambassador for Christ. You represent me. You better show them who I am. That's what folks want to see. They don't want to see. And then he says, show them your good works. He knew he had some bad works. He said, show them your good work. When you're having a bad day, keep it to yourself. Talk to God. But when you step out that door and folks see you, show them your good works. That's what they want to see. Because you can't get caught up in your emotions. You have to walk in truth. All these things need to be overcome so they no longer disrupt our relationship with God. Don't allow your emotions to disrupt what's happening with you and God. I always say stay connected to the power core, the power source. Stay connected to it. Don't, don't uh, short yourself out being disconnected from the power source. Because when you lose the power of Jesus, you're subjected to do anything that you want in your will, and it is scary where you may end up. I always say I can go to Santa Ana Valley and visit my high school, but I don't want to be that same person or pastor said that same ninja that was at Santa Ana Valley. I'm a whole brand new person now. So you have to understand, you are, remember who you represent. Now, these things must be brought back to faith. But you can't allow that unbelief. Don't you know when you get right there, and Mr. Simon, Pastor Simon always talk about it, when you get right there and you get up to the top of the mountain, you don't stay there long. That's right. That's right. You don't stay there long. Right. Because he's got to get, he, the devil's got to try to get you off course again. 
But don't you know, as you as you are going up to the top, my God is still there with you. Right. Don't you know that even the devil can't attack you unless he asks God? Right. Have you considered, that was a conversation with Job, have you considered my servant? He can't come after you, Sister Keisha, unless he asks God. God says, oh, you can mess with him. He said, you got a protection head around you. Don't you know we all got a head around us that God is protecting us? Don't you know when you step up, you hit that fence, he tell you, don't go that way? But some of us who still want to step over the fence or knock down the fence, that was the barrier to keep you back where you should be. But we have to understand that we will not overcome it by ourselves. It's only God that can overcome it with us, right? All he's telling you is just stand with your faith. Just believe who I am. Just stand by the faith despite of what is happening in your life right now. Stand on faith alone. As I come in the sink where every day I look down on that little jar that the ushers have of mustard seed. God says, just have it. Mustard seed. It's so small. I don't even think I can hold it like this. I have to put it like this. That's how, if you just amount of faith in God. He says, watch what I do. But just have that amount of faith. Because that amount of faith will make you realize that you have victory in Jesus. I say again, what does victory have to do with our relationship with God? We have to believe him no matter what seems to contradict yes, sir. him. Yes, sir. No matter what seems to contradict our life or what refuses to allow anything to come between him and us. My wife is, I call her, she's my apple, she's my peach. She's my, she's my side. I told her someday she's the good side. I'm the bad side. But she's not in front of me, she's not behind me, she's right there on my side. She's what completes me. God knew that. You know, some stuff I get too hard headed, so you have to tell my wife to tell me. Or, or vice versa. But the one thing about her, because she's my side, she's my helpmate. She's not there to tear me down. She's there to be my support. Don't you know sometimes that she had to be there when I really got down? And all she did is kept quoting scripture. And so when you're weak or you start having some unbelief, I was like, I don't want to hear that. I said, I ain't talking to her. I don't want to hear all that stuff. So I called this guy. That was a bad mistake. <laughs> because all he did is quote the same scripture. That's why I'm going to call my buddy. I'm going to call Sister Simon. She knows how I am. She knows sometimes we feel the same way. Yeah. All she did is quote scripture. That's the type of friend you need. I don't need nobody feeling sorry for me. I'm sorry enough for myself. I need somebody to bring me back to where I should be. The only thing that's going to bring you back is the word of God. The only thing that's going to help you is the word of God. So remember I said, you better make sure your, your friends, frenemies, are helping you get back to the word of God. Right, sir. Because anything else don't matter. Let me wrap this up with this. We, and as I was saying, we have to believe anything that comes upon us. It doesn't change our walk, our talk, our life, what we do in Christ, right? It doesn't matter what happens. That's just, understand this, that's just life. Right. That's the life we live that we're going to have to go through. Now, you can choose the course of your life if you want to make it better. And the only reason some of our lives are not better because we think we know what's good for us. God says, I know what's better for you. You know, sometimes we come back after we done messed up, we go back to him. 
Uh, All he says is, why didn't you give it to me in the first place? <laughs> so there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. But understand this, there's never a time where we are cut off from God. Right. Because when he went to the cross, he assured all these things for us. Correct. The question is, do you believe what he says? Yes. Do you believe who he says he is? How strong is your faith? How strong is your walk? You know, I said the choir was singing a song that radiated with me. And it's a simple song. It says, my name yeah. is victory. Yeah. Do you believe what you're, what you're singing? Right, my my right, name right. is victory. Right, right. But look at what it says. It says, I got evidence. Yeah. We know who he is. I got confidence. Right. I'm a conqueror. Right. I wish I could sing it, y'all, but I ain't. <laughs> It says, I know that I will win. I know who I am. God wrote it in his plan. Don't you know he's already wrote the plan for you that you have victory? He said he gave me authority to conquer the enemy. He wrote it in my destiny. And my name, my name is victory. I said, do you have victory in the house today? He said, he said, my name is victory. I know who I am. I wrote it in my plan. He gave us all the tools to understand that my name is victory. If you don't leave nothing else, they know that you have the victory in Jesus. As long as you know you got victory, everything else don't matter no more. Just understand, I know I got victory. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. My name is victory. There may be someone today that may not understand that they have victory in Jesus. Not just when you want it to go your way. But there, there, you may not understand that you have the victory in spite of what it looks like. Right. Yeah. That's it. Come on, deacons. As we go to God, we petition God to open the doors of the church. There are three invitations to the door. The first one is you may not know who Jesus is as a part yeah. of your sin. Yeah. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe the Lord Jesus has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Out of that guarantee. And then the second one is, if you're looking for a church home, we got a great pastor that's standing in the middle. He would love to be your pastor. Because understand this, everybody can't leave me. Everybody can't watch out for my soul. You need to, your pastor is your soul watcher. Right. Now, I don't recommend, but you can call him late in the midnight hour. <laughs> pastor will take your call. That's what type of pastor we have. Right. Because that's, and like I said, let me say this. If you don't love your pastor, you're in the wrong house. Because yeah. I'm not going to a restaurant I don't like. So I must like the food that he's serving. I'm not going to many Hollis since the time. I love it. <laughs> That's for free, y'all. You better make sure you love where you eat. <laughs> and the last time I said, he's serving up the word of God, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then there may be someone who is maybe in a backslid condition. Yes, sir. God said he's married to the backslider. Right, and you know it's true because I was that backslider. Right, but God saw fit to bring me back in. And then there's a, if you just want prayer, if you're on the feet or if you're in the house, just raise your hand and put it in the feet. Because prayer is just you talking to God. We all stand in need of prayer. Is there one today? Understand, you can always. Ask.
accept Jesus anytime you can call on my name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys in the hands of my pastor. Yes. Come on, give God a hand of praise for... Mr. Neal, we thank God for the word of God. Come on, say amen for the word of God. Were y'all blessed with the, by the message? Say this real quick, because some of y'all haven't focused yet. You, uh, you still worrying about your team. Amen. I don't have no horse in the race, so I'm just going to watch. And I, 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 I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'd like to be a good pastor, but I ain't pulling for your team, and I ain't pulling for your team. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just want a good game, amen. amen. And I ain't pulling for your team either, because they, the, they ain't even in the Super Bowl. They ain't even around the Super Bowl. I always want to talk about the Rams, the Rams, okay. I, I, I'm honest. Uh, Fan, and I appreciate it. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Let's grace his mercy towards us. It is offering time. Amen. Amen. We, we don't walk around. Uh, we let you, we, we come to you, amen. And we ask you that you would bless God with your fruits of your labor. The Bible says that we ought to bring the tithe and the offering to the storehouse. Now, uh, real soon, y'all, this is going to be a great uh, a spring summer. Um, real soon, I'm, I'm, I'm developing and looking at a series of messages on giving. And y'all better not take vacation on that month. Amen. Amen. Because I don't know if I'm going to do it in Bible study. If I'm going to do it, I'm probably going to do it in both. Amen. So we could be in in place, um, but uh, a couple of things were raised to me. Um, first of all, us as a people, I know we're celebrating Black History Month. Come on, say Amen. amen. Now I'm black all year, and so thirty days won't cover all that we have begun to accomplish. Y'all y'all do know. They don't like to give us credit, but uh, half the stuff that you're looking at, uh, black folks invented. Amen. Come on, say amen. And it's not nothing about it's not nothing about uh, prejudice, but uh, I thank God that He gifted uh, us as a people to rise above our circumstances. And the man just told you, in God we have victory. Amen. And so y'all, when y'all leave here today, whether your team is in the Super Bowl or not, uh, you just know no matter where, where it stands, we have victory. I'm, I'm going to say this, and then we're going to give. On next Sunday, I'm most excited because Pastor Ivan Pitts, Dr. Ivan Pitts from the Second Baptist Church will be our preacher. Amen. And present the word. Come on, say amen. Now, I'm, I'm saying all of that because I'm going to need you all to be in place. Amen. I'm going to need you all to be in place. I invited my friend, and, it, and it's, a, it's a bad representation when you invite your friend to the party and nobody shows up. Amen. I thank God for all of you. We worked together on last, on yesterday, celebrating with the Jackson family. Come on, say amen. Sister Earlene Jackson turned 88. Amen. Come on, y'all say, y'all say amen. And, and I told her I need her 88. Amen. Because uh, she, she, she walks, she don't limp, and she's thinking her mind is clear. And, uh, she has great energy great personality and she and she looked she told me she told me sitting there she said well uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on overtime and I, I said yeah you're on grace time 
So I said, since you're on grace, we might as well enjoy it. Amen. Yeah. So, I, so I told her, I said, when, I said, when you turn 90, we, we gonna go to Hawaii together. Yeah. Amen, and celebrate you. And so she said, that, that's far away. Then she said, then it's not just a couple of years. So we're praying that God will bless her with many more, amen. Come on, stand up, Sister Jackson, so we can recognize. Amen. We, 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 we want to do that uh, for our seniors, amen, and for our folks. Yeah, yeah, we all going because we going to be 60 and she going to be 90. Amen. Woohoo, y'all low. Y'all going to be 60. Y'all going to be. Man, look, I, I look out. I look out and I thank God for age. I mean, I, my mama said either you you grow old or you die young. And I, I'll take the alternative of growing old. Amen. So I thank God for every ache, every pain. Uh, I thank God for trifocals, bifocals, and any other focals, because I got eyes and I can see. And so I'm grateful to God for all that. Um, again, we, we thank you. We want to recognize our guest, Sister Elise. Uh, is that Jenkins? Okay. All right, stand up for us, Sister Elise. You, you, you don't have to say nothing. We, we just want to recognize you and say to you that we love you. We, we welcome you to our church fellowship and to our church family. And if you are here in the Santa Ana area or in the Orange County area, you're more than welcome to be a part of the fellowship. If you do not have a church home, we love to recommend us, but if you have any inkling or ideas, we're, we're that kind that we will send you to wherever you want to go. We're just here to help you. And so, come on, Covenant City, let's do what we do. Come on, let's do what we do, and, and welcome Sister Elise. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. To our online visitors, please let us know where you're seeing us from or, or where you're getting or you're receiving a signal from so we can see uh, in the feed where it is that you are and we welcome you. Thank you for being a part of the fellowship and thank you for being a part of this service. We pray that you were helped by what has transpired thus far. Amen. Amen. All right, come on, let's give God a hand of praise. And let me say this, she, she, she stood up, she, she didn't stand up as a visitor or sign a card, but, but my good friend, did I say my good friend? My, my sister, say again. Oh, someone's glasses. All right, well, look, I'll know, I'll know who they are because they'll be bumping in the walls. Uh, my, my good friend, Has, has decided to join us. Amen. Amen. And y'all going, why is he delaying? Because you know that sometimes the uh, old uh, uh, Sister Linda Fay, amen. Uh, stand up, Sister Linda, so they can see her, see you. That, that, that is a sister beloved and a friend uh, who is helping us, amen, in our praise team to lead praise and worship. She's a member of West Angeles Church in Los Angeles and lives in Los Angeles. And, and, and uh, they, they, they're not using her gifts right at the moment. So she, she and, uh, uh, and Sister uh, Kim, uh, who are my sisters, my big sister said, bro, we'll help you. And she came here to help, come on, say amen. And I, I love, I love her for it. And I love her spirit because that's, as, as they say, that's how we were raised. We, 
we were younger in church together at New Spirit. That's how we were raised. We helped each other. And so she's here. So don't look at her like she's strange. She, she's, she's a part of the family. Amen. She's part of the family. And so I just want to let you know, uh, the pastor just replacing folks in New Spirit. No, we're not replacing. We, we just enhancing. Amen. What God is good. So y'all give her a hand. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. And then I, I need this. Now, I don't do it every month because I, I, I just don't do it every month. But I need all of my February babies to stand up with me. Uh, if you're born in February, just, just stand up. Stand up with me. Today is Sister Nancy's birthday. Amen. Today. Praise the Lord. Bro Brother Jeff's birthday was... Thursday, the, the eighth. So y'all say amen. Oh, see, I, I knew I knew we liked each other for a reason. I didn't know it's because we both were born in February. Amen. Y'all say amen for my sister. She. Now you're February what? February first. So you 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 let us out. Praise yeah. the, you. You're. Can I say this to you? You're a great Aquarian. Let me say, Amen. Come on, give her a hand. And then Sister Sweetie, who turned 88, give her a hand as well. Now, I, I say all this because we have been graced to share the best month of the year. Y'all don't have to argue it. Though, those, those that are born in February already know. We, we, we are the creme de la creme. Amen. Y'all follow us. Amen. It's, it's, uh, who? What'd you say? You said you have an eye. But I, I, I thank God for if God lets me live on Thursday, I will turn 58. Amen. Thursday. And I, I thank God that I don't look like I look like what I've been through. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful. On Friday, see? Okay, Friday. All right. Okay, Friday. I don't look at the calendar. I just when it, it look, 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 look. I just let Lord open my eyes. I said, thank you, God. I'm good. Uh, yeah, so Friday. Friday. I said Thursday, y'all. Charge it to my head, not my heart. Uh, but on Friday, I turned 58. If the Lord says, sing. Who said? He said, wow, like that's old. Uh, if y'all don't like to have fun, you don't want to come to this church. <laughs> we say anything. Wow. Oh, uh, but thank God. Y'all give, uh, give the praise team a hand and our musicians. Now, we, we were supposed to do the Black National Anthem, and uh, I, I didn't want to put that pressure on y'all. So y'all got till, till next week to learn it. Because <laughs> outside of lift every voice and sing, y'all don't know none of the words. Y'all be like, lift every voice and sing. <laughs> so I already knew. So, so we, we gonna supply the words. And, and we, <laughs> and we're, we're, now look, y'all, y'all, look, y'all know the other one. Oh, say, can you see? Y'all know that one. Don't, don't know your own, amen. But we, we, we thank God. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it to you. Be proud of your heritage. Hey, hey. Somebody, somebody said black is beautiful. <laughs> can, can I tell you what Red Fox, <laughs> Red Fox said, Red said to Esther, black is beautiful. He said, but they looked at your family and they said, no, 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 no. So, so when, when he said that to Esther, I said, well, man, you know, black is beautiful. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That's what I say to every of my sisters and brothers. Y'all be proud of what God made you. 
Amen. Amen. And who God made you to be. And that we have been able as people of color to rise above it all. That there's a reason because we are victorious in God. Y'all heard the preacher, didn't you? He says, because we are in God, we are victorious. Just, just do me a favor. Just turn to a neighbor and say, my name. Come on, tell them, my name. Come on, my name. I don't care what they say, my name. I don't care what my credit score is. My name. I don't care if I live in an apartment or if I live in a rented home or if I own a home. My name is victory. Come on, give God a hand of praise. We'll have the last words and benediction by our speaker of the hour. Now, he's going to come and he's going to dismiss us from the floor. I'm going to ask you just like I asked you the last time, if the word was a blessing to you, come and shake his hand. And also when you shake his hand, have, have something in your hand. Uh, you, you, we can't pay for the word. Amen. But we can, we can assist him along the way. The Bible says if you give to a prophet a cold glass of water, you shall receive a what? Prophet's reward. Somebody asked, what is the prophet's reward? I'm glad you asked. Paul says in the writing of Timothy that the man of God or the, 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 the preacher is worth double honor. He's worthy of double honor. So I want you to be a blessing to this man of God. Amen. And uh, I, I'm going to check to see. I'm going to check to see. And then I'm going to want you to turn around and do the same thing on next week. And if the Lord says the same, uh, Minister Nick will be preaching for us on the fourth Sunday. Amen. Amen. Here's why I need you to be in the house. Because he's also going to receive his license from the church on. And somebody said, he, I thought he's already licensed. No, I, I take my time when it comes to stuff like this. Because I want to make sure that they walk worthy of the call in which they were called into. So we're going to officially give him his license, which will now give him the official he, he's been driving on a permit. Yeah. <laughs> now he's going to have a license to be able to drive legally. So all that will take place on the fourth Sunday. Amen. So he's going to preach. We're going to present his certificate. Amen. And then we're going to see what God says uh, through him to us. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. As we welcome Minister Neil back to the pulpit. Come on, say amen. amen. As you all know, I am not Minister Neil. Okay. <laughs> but we praise God for all that he has done and all that we've heard today. Right. And for all of you February birthdays, happy birthday. Right. But we're going to call one out amongst you right. to wish him a very, very happy birthday from his New Covenant family. So no disregard to anybody else in February, but we're going to ask Pastor if he would come forward. And if all of you would please join me in singing happy birthday to our pastor. Uh, Any time now. To me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
It took me back to some old school stuff. <laughs> amen, amen. Thanks, uh, two things for us to close out. Men's breakfast next week. Men's breakfast next week is at, what time is it, girl? Nine? Zero nine. Zero nine. Amen. We ask that you come out. I think we've been having a great time. Right. Amen. The fellowship has been, you know, it's been a great word, too. Amen. So, like I said, men's breakfast and then yesterday is, what's my other one? Oh. Daughter-in-law has a table yeah. outside the door for Valentine's Week. Weeks that is just as you look and stop by and see what's right. Amen. 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 Um, all hearts and minds clear. Right. Amen. Let me pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your service, Father. We thank you for this service and us edifying us this week. Thank you all once again for this harvest project. Now, Father, we ask that you bless them for many more birthdays, Father. Bless them, Father, as we go on this vacation or trip, Father. We ask you to touch him and his wife and family. Touch all of our church family, Father. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. We are for you to say, Amen. You are dismissed.